As a connection with the Speedlane Pro has been established, you will receive a couple of handshake screens which you can clear by clicking on OK on each of them. Once the connection is fully established in Stats Analyzer, you can then navigate to the tab at the top of your screen for the Installation Wizard. When you click on the Installation Wizard tab, you'll have the option to click Next and begin the uh, setup process. You can conduct the Installation Wizard even after a radar has been installed and configured previously in case you need to uh, reestablish any parameters. Uh, that uh, or if the device has been moved or replaced uh, or if this is a brand new installation then it's the uh, appropriate path to take. Click on next in the bottom right corner and your first choice, uh, your first screen will give you the uh, required boxes to confirm that the clock on the radar is uh, set to the appropriate time and that you are using the appropriate units of measurement. So this clock is set to uh, Wednesday, October 12th at 9.49 a.m. Uh, U.S. Central Time. That is correct. And we are using MPH for miles per hour instead of KMH for kilometers per hour. So that is also correct. Once you have checked both of those boxes, click on Next in the bottom right corner. And then in the step two of your installation wizard, uh, you will get a uh, snapshot progress from the built-in HD video camera uh, that will update approximately every five seconds to uh, give you a view of real-time conditions in front of the radar. Uh, using the uh, built-in uh, measurement capacity of the speed lane, you will also find the level of the speed lane. That is uh, right and left side uh, square with the ground. And then the tilt is the amount of uh, rotation that the Speed Lane Pro needs within its mounting bracket on the pole uh, so that the red crosshairs are approximately one third to one half of the way across the desired detection zone. Uh, this step will require some coordination with the installer in a bucket truck or on a ladder positioning the device and then uh, someone else running the installation wizard uh, from their PC, usually on the ground level. Once you have confirmed that the device is level with the road and square with the detection or with the lanes of detection, you will check each of these boxes to confirm proper setup and then click on next to proceed to the uh, third step of your installation wizard. This step is uh, creating and preparing uh, what is called the background clutter constant. This is a mapping feature in which the Speed Lane Pro recognizes everything returning a signal in the detection zone. And as those objects uh, stay still, then they are ignored and become part of the background of the detection zone so that only moving targets are registered as data. So in step four, uh, the background clutter constant is uh, beginning. You'll notice that when it says BGC complete, you will click on next. Step five, you are still at a very similar looking screen, uh, but this is where you create the lanes of detection. You will notice in this graph uh, along the Y axis uh, is a range of measurements. Since we are using uh, Imperial units, this is a range in feet. If you are switched to uh, the metric system, then you will see uh, this range in meters. All of the vehicles that are being detected are represented by red and green squiggly lines on this graph. Uh, and by default, all vehicles assume to be traveling right to left. In most applications, that will need to be adjusted as you create each lane. Uh, as you will notice on the left-hand side of this graph, there is a series of blue dots that are beginning to form and accumulate as you see these vehicle representations uh, cross through the detection zone. This is called your histogram. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a box with a check mark beside it by default that shows show histogram. Uh, this represents the location of each vehicle in the detection zone. And what that means for purposes of the installation wizard is that where the lanes of travel are. As these histograms continue to build up, they will form a triangle or arrowhead shape. And the point of that shape 
is usually the center of the detection zone. You can zoom in your view of this location in order to give yourself finer control uh, as you begin to create your lanes of detection. So this is an eight lane road with a median. Uh, so you can see here, uh, as we go from bottom to top, this is the closest lane to the farthest lane. And there is a decent amount of traffic this morning. And so you will see these histograms begin to build up rather quickly. And again, uh, the point of those is usually the center of the lane uh, where most vehicles kind of end up uh, as they travel through the detection zone. You have, the, uh, you have two options on how to create your lanes of travel. Uh, when you right click on your graph, both of those options will be presented at the top of the pop-up menu. Uh, you have a choice for define new lane, which is a click and drag mechanism to manually create lanes using the mouse or trackpad of your computer. And then the edit lane feature will give the ability to manually enter uh, distances for the start and end of each defined lane. As a, as a personal preference, I usually use a combination of either of these two options. So with the define new lane choice, again, I will be able to move my cursor uh, along the graph to frame the very first lane. And I want it to be wide enough to encompass uh, all the histograms that are being bit up that indicate the first lane. So I click once to establish the beginning of the lane then I click a second time to establish the end of that lane. And it is not overly important to get these exactly right the first time, as long as you are aware that you will probably need to go back and, and define them and clean them up as the histograms continue to build and you get more uh, data images here. So after I have that first lane established, um, I like to use the edit lanes when I know the uh, lane definitions. So in this case, this is a United States Highway. Uh, so the lane widths are 12 feet. So at lane one, uh, my lane ends at 34, it starts at 24 here. That's probably more likely that it ends about 36. If I go to lane two, uh, I will put in my lane start at 36. And then my lane end will be about 12 foot. And again, these are Kind of just placeholders while you are uh, establishing all of the lanes of travel that to be monitored. My lane direction again is we traveling left to right. Uh, then I will go to lane three. Lane start is at 48 feet. And again, at 60 foot or 12 foot increments. I'll put in 60. It's also lane one. Uh, Good, so as I've established my lanes just based on the width uh, of the lanes uh, to be monitored, you can see that the points are not exactly in the center. That's okay, I can always go back and edit those um, once I get the rest of my lanes established. So I will right click again, and this time again, I'm going to use the drag and click and drag method. Start there and end about there. And now I'm going to use the other method for edit lanes. When you are creating your lanes, when they are contiguous, meaning the lanes touch each other, you will not want a space in between there. Um, so all contiguous lanes uh, should start where the previous one ended. So as I go and look at my uh, lane definitions now, I have the direction of travel established uh, for these first four lanes as left to right. And I have these other, uh, the farther lanes established as right to left. I have them at 12 foot increments, which looks pretty close to what the histogram is showing me where the cars are traveling, might not be exactly right. Uh, by default, the Speed Lane Pro will only collect data from within these established lanes. So as you can see, a vehicle traveling uh, kind of above or past the uh, defined
combined lanes of this interstate, uh, an access road or parking lot or some other facility there, um, even though the speed lane is capable of detecting them and does in fact detect them, they will not be included in the data sets that you review. That is a setting, you can change that, but again, by default, uh, only the data that is uh, collected from within these defined eight lanes here will be reported. So some of these other histogram plot points could be chalked up to um, reflections, uh, whether it's a barrier on the far side or oddly shaped vehicles. Uh, again, there's a barrier here in the median uh, that might explain where some of these histograms are coming from. Uh, so the uh, every single histogram plot point uh, will not necessarily reflect an actual vehicle. Uh, that is where the background clutter, cl clutter constant uh, comes into effect where uh, as the speed lane learns where these non-moving devices are located, it will start to filter those out from your data. As a rule of thumb, we usually suggest that users discard the first hour worth of data after installation uh, as the speed lane pro is learning um, the map of, of all reflectable product uh, devices in the detection zone. As I go back and I need to now fine tune my lane definitions a bit, I can click on clear histograms. And now the histogram plot points will be uh, building up more cleanly. And I can then tailor my lane definitions uh, to encompass them properly. Another feature of this screen is the ability to ensure that your device is mounted square with the vehicles traveling through the detection zone. A good way to do that is click this show RSS box. RSS stands for return signal strength. Uh, it's very similar to the bars you would see on your cell phone modem. The more bars you have, the better the signal strength is. This is, again is usually a reflection of uh, how square to the vehicles uh, the radar is mounted. When you have three, four, and five dark green and dark red boxes, then uh, you have a very strong return signal strength, which means that the radar beams are bouncing back. Uh, at a perpendicular angle to the vehicle's uh, direction of travel. Where you have light green and light red or pink boxes, those are uh, usually ghosts or echoes. So that uh, be where radio waves bounced off of an object, hit a barrier, and then are reflected back to the radar. Uh, the dark red and dark green. Uh, so as you're observing vehicles moving across and you're able to determine if the return signal strength is sufficient for the area of the road in which you're trying to detect. Uh, there is another step you can also take from this screen uh, in order to confirm proper alignment. That is to use the show stats choice down here at the bottom of the graph. Um, this will show you an active count for each lane that is defined with the average speed on the right hand side. Uh, if you are roadside during the installation and you wish to do a quick ground truth of uh, the lanes that you have defined, then you can select show stats, uh, pick a lane or several lanes to count, uh, and confirm your alignment that way. Once you have established that all the lanes of detection uh, encompass the uh, roadway that you wish to monitor, uh, you are then almost done with the install wizard. You can click on the next button. In the following screen, uh, for finalized setup, you'll see three choices that uh, have the default selections made for them already. All of these choices are very rare to use, so the default selections are most commonly uh, selected already for the vast majority of users. Uh, if there's any question about changing any of these selections, then please let your Houston Radar rep or technician know. We're happy to address that with you. From the screen, select next, and you have completed the install wizard. Once it is finished, uh, you click the finish button here. You're then able to uh, navigate to the speed lane setup tab and make any additional changes to settings that uh, were not available in the installation wizard. In the detection and units tab, obviously this is where you would make the selection for miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Uh, the background clutter compensation, which we discussed uh, in step four of the install wizard, can be adjusted here. The vehicle bins tab uh, gives you the ability to define the range of size classes you wish to monitor and have reported on. <clears throat> uh, these size classes do need to go from 
shortest to largest, as indicated here by this note, length must be in incremental order. So vehicle class one uh, in this particular case would be uh, zero recorded feet up to uh, less than 25 feet. Size two would then be 25 feet to less than 40 feet, so on and so forth. The Speed Lane Pro uh, provides for up to eight user-defined size classes. No other radar in the industry will offer more choices than this. The serial port tab will give you the opportunity to adjust your load rate. And this is also where you will have the software selection to change from a serial interface of RS-232 to RS-422 or to RS-485. Your network tab is where you would enable uh, network communications with the Speed Lane Pro uh, over an Ethernet connection. You can uh, select either a static IP address or DHCP to acquire an IP address. If you have this device located on a system that is perhaps backed by fiber with an Ethernet connection and a nearby cabinet, uh, the selections here on the right is where you would use the internal modem option, uh, whether you're connecting with our Tetrion uh, cloud server or to some other server of your own using. And the advanced tab uh, gives you the chance to revisit those last three options from the installation wizard. The user login tab is where you can come in and create uh, additional security for this particular radar. If you would like to uh, create a, a, an added security um, component to logging into the device besides just connecting. Uh, you will then um, have to log into the device with the username and password. The X3G4 tab gives you the ability to have this radar respond to RTMS messages. RTMS is uh, an older but common uh, file protocol used for sidefire radar. Uh, if your control software uses the RTMS protocol, this needs to be checked. Uh, with the appropriate options below selected uh, for communications with your software. You can always also view your speed lane plot tab if further adjustments to the lane definitions need to be made. Uh, you can notice this screen looks exactly like uh, step five in your install wizard. Um, and again, if you right click here and for example, select edit lanes, then you then have the ability to uh, adjust the start and end location for each lanes or uh, delete all of these lanes and start again from scratch.